And YouTube channel, check modules, it says. This is the channel. You go to the channel, the whole list of all classes from the beginning is there. All the lectures in one place. You can post in the, yeah, I can show you, or I can post you the link in the forum. Areas and different integrals. Last time we did finally uh, finish calculating antiderivatives of this and that. We know antiderivative of sine. Who knows what is antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine because derivative of cosine is minus sine. Good job. And the integral of cosine is positive sine because derivative of sine of cosine. What is the integral of 1 over x? What do you think? L n x, right? Don't forget that's the value. E to the x gives you e to the x and those kind of things. Let's connect why we're doing this. So this is a cool idea I like to explain at this chapter. When we teach you functions in algebra classes and pre-calculus classes, we teach you how to draw them, distinguish them between parabolas and cubic functions, finding roots, and so on. Shifting up and down, probably you learned this at some point. Then we taught you derivative, right? Here it is, f prime, your derivative. And we were doing it the whole semester derivative. The whole semester we were differentiating arc signs and cosines and logarithmic functions and product rules and implicit differentiation. We explain you that derivative have lots of meanings. One of them is slopes of the tangent lines, but it's mathematical approach. In general, it's a, it's a speed. It's uh, how fast something is changing. Acceleration, second derivative. So whatever is changing, it's a derivative. You're breathing right now. The speed of your breath is derivative. The temperature around you is changing because you are sweating or giving the heat away. That is derivative. How fast does it change? Find a derivative. What is integral though? We found anti-derivative. Anti-derivative or integral. We found that 2x came from x squared. Wow, what a surprise. But what does it mean? And that is a pretty cool idea to explain what does that mean right now. One of the coolest ideas is that integral accumulates changes which you cannot accumulate outside of integration. For example, in mathematics, we keep increasing complexity all the time. We teach kids first addition, right? Then we teach uh, division and so on and so on. I explained it last time. Every time we try to reverse the process, it gets harder. Don't divide by zero. Integral gives you plus C. So undoing derivatives is harder. But we also teach kids if something is repeated, if something is repeated many times, you can collect it into a nice notation. For example, two q. Yeah, that that makes. Oh no, this one is not. Two times three. That's the addition repeated three times. If something is repeated as a product, then we teach students in school. Yeah, that also had a notation. Two to the three. That is a product, but what is going to happen if I want to accumulate in a nice short notation also product, but with different numbers, 2 times 3 times 5, 7 times pi times, let's not do pi in this case, I guess, 13.5 uh, How to accumulate this in a one nice short notation? This will be integral. And that's a cool idea. Integration takes product into the next level. So just like exponent 2 to the 3 has a name, it's 2 cubed. Integral is a new name of accumulation products with different numbers. And numbers are different heights. So that takes us to this idea of graphing. For example, a car is traveling, a car traveling at a constant velocity of 60 miles per hour along a straight highway. Wow, how long the sentence is? Okay, good. Can you see it? A car is traveling at a constant velocity, so you use cruise control. You're traveling 60 miles per hour, which is pretty low, um, along a straight highway over a two hour period. For two hours, you're using cruise control. Find the displacement. Do you see what is happening here? They give us velocity, which is 60. They ask us to find S. So here it is, I'm writing for you. What is S of T? And last time we agreed with you, we're undoing the differentiation. So if velocity is given, we did it last time in class, to find displacement, you need to do what with velocity? To integrate. So we're gonna do it in a second. But can we do it without integration? Yes, we can. Let's draw it. 
This is the function v equals 60. v equals 60 looks like that. If I'm drawing in Cartesian coordinates where output is v of t and input is time t, then v equals 60 is a constant function parallel to x-axis, in this case t-axis. It starts when t is 0 and ends in 2 hours. So that's why it's from 0 to 2. And it says it's always 60. 60, 60, 60 in 1 hour, in 1.5 hour, it's still 60. So that's the idea here. What they're asking us is to find how far did I go in 2 hours with this given speed. How do you do it from the school you learned? Multiply. Do you remember distance equals speed times what? Time. Distance equals speed. Let's write down units. Miles. And write down them as a fraction. That's going to be important. Miles per hour. Times how many hours did I drive for 60 miles per hour? With a 60 miles per hour speed, two hours. This is what we learn in school. That... Distance is speed times time, right? We kind of know it from a while. Also what you get when you do Right. So just a second. 60 times 2 is 120. And then look how nicely hours cancel out. So I have 120 miles, unit matched. You guys are biologists or whatever major you're going to choose. You will need units in your career. That's quite important to learn that they should make sense. It should not show up miles squared or hours times miles. If you did that, you messed up. 60 times 2 hours cancel out, 120 miles. So I, I was driving for, I drove 120 miles total. It makes sense. Read it out loud. In English, it says 1 hour, 60 miles per hour. That's 60. One more hour, 60 miles per hour. One more 60, that's 120. It makes sense, right? There was a very funny YouTube when they asked a passenger, what is, uh, how far do we go if our speed is 60 miles per hour? And they could not answer, like, 60 miles in hour. So that makes sense. But this is also the area of this rectangle. With the height, 60, and width, 2. It's exactly the same thing. It's a 60 times 2 rectangle, which gives you 120. So, apparently, we now know three things. When you integrate, let me write down. When you integrate velocity from, let's do t1 to t2, that's time, with respect to t, that will give you distance. We just did it in last class on Friday. Okay, what, what does t1 that's time 1, time 2. So f in this case, it's going to be from 0 to 2. I will write down, don't worry. I'm confused about why you're running them above the integral side, above the integral Yeah, yeah. Oh, we did not do it before. Yes, you're right, you're right. Let's keep it like so. Sure I will do it right now in a second. Yeah, I'll explain in a second. So, in this case, we're integrating. No, I will explain in a second. So, we have three things together. Three things together merged. Finding entire derivative of 60. We're going to do it right now. Graphing the rectangle and knowing from school that it is 60 times 2 because 60 miles per hour. Three things merge in one and this is the beautiful part of mathematics when physics made sense because of mathematics. So what happens if velocity is changing? And this is where it becomes very interesting because constant velocity was convenient to figure out the rectangle. But what if I was driving for time t time, v of t still here. I was driving, say, first 25 miles per hour, speeding up, speeding up, 60 miles per hour. I saw the police over there, so I slowed down a little bit, cruise control, and then speed up again. How would you figure that out? So this will be the same idea. Finding the area below these changing quantities is integration. So this is the main idea of integral. Integral accumulates different numbers. Just like I showed you at the very beginning of the class, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is easy. But what is 2? What is 30 miles per hour? And then it was 50 miles per hour. Over here it's 95. You was afraid to get a ticket, so you slowed down to 75. 
and then 65. How would you calculate all of these when they change all the time? Integral walks from this time to this time and accumulates all of these changes in one bucket and then gives you the answer. So that is a pretty cool and complicated idea. So if velocity is changing, you have this situation. There are lots of cool applications. Of course, the COVID idea, we had cases per day. Each case gave me, each data point gave me number of people who got sick. How to accumulate them all? If, there, if this class has 55 people per day attending on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's easy. I will multiply 55 times 3 in a week. I got the answer. But what if it's 55 today and then 60 on Wednesday and then 10 on Friday because you guys got lazy? This is what is happening here. Accumulating all three will be integrating them all, getting together. So I'll show you. That's why they were talking about these ideas of blah, blah, blah. Um, some kind of prevention made the area below the graph slow, lower, so the integral is smaller. And we're going to calculate this right now. But before, I wanted to show you this cool animation. Here is the idea. Accumulating more and more and more areas below say this is your velocity and trying to get them together and the all different heights represents the different output this one is also cool the more you add the more precise it becomes so this is numerical integration approximation with rectangles which is a pretty cool idea and this is what i was talking about this um, animation is from wikipedia so there is a graph that tells you my speed but how and how far do i go Area below the speed will tell you that this is the integral. We need to learn how to calculate the integral. So, for the example we just did, for previous example, we're finally going to introduce the definite integral. For previous example, just a second, Chris, let me finish. For previous example, we have uh, that we were driving for driving, driving for two t equals two hours with driving, with the given speed, which is v of t equals, what was it? 60, thank you, miles per hour. Then, then distance, traveled, let's call it S, can be written as integral from 0 to 2, that's a notation called definite integral. The number will be below the integral sign and above integral sign. So it's definite, we're defining limits of integration of the function 60 dt. That's what is happening here. In general, let me give you this formula. In general, in general, Distance can be found as the integral from, that's what I wanted to say, let's not do t1, t2, from a to b, integrating or finding entire derivative of velocity with respect to t, and then having borders a and b, which I need to explain you how to use. That is going to give you the distance traveled, this traveled during just a second well actually you can ask while I'm writing during time you can ask Chris oh, so what is the zero so what could be an A and B yes so that's what I'm going to explain you travel during the time A and B so you will have in this case it was like so like so you start at zero time and then you traveled for two hours. So A is zero, no good question, and B is two. And that's what we'll be integrating from two. If you don't integrate from two, you call it indefinite integral. That's what we learned last week. Defining limits of integration means you're now working with definite integral during time. So traveled during this time. And that's how you can find you can ask why we did so complicated if it's just 20, if it's just 60 times 2. Why didn't you just say that t equals 2? No, we cannot do it. Sometimes you can do from 5 hours to 12 hours. How far did you go? 
Right? Yes, that is exactly this limit of integration shows you what are the borders, the beginning and the end. The idea of having beginning and the end will be extremely crucial in biology and engineering computer science in general. I suppose it you will see it. When the curve isn't flat. It may, yeah, it's it's very important. You will see that. Yeah. So you can ask me why did we just not multiply 60 times 2 like we did? Because 60 times 2 works only if this line is straight. The moment line is not straight, you're using an integral. Integral v of t dt. So you can still integrate, of course, the line, but that was just too easy. With other shapes, we're gonna use integrals, we're gonna find entire derivatives. So slowly let's get to this topic. I know it's gonna be a little bit confusing, but uh, today we're gonna do some pom 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 geometry. And I know that American students hate geometry for some reason. You guys don't really have it in schools like we do. And then every time we do geometry in college, people just freak out for some reason. So we have to review areas of triangles and trapezoids and all that kind of stuff. But let me remind you, it's not that bad. So areas. For now, let's just uh, work on the idea that areas can be positive and negative. Let's see. In general, areas are always positive, but what happens if the graph is not below the function, like so? Here is the shadow below a function, function called f of x. The shadow is only considered to be from A to B. The shadow or the rain, you can imagine it's a 2D cloud in 2D, and it's raining. But we only want to see what's happening from A to B. The area, the area, A, let's call it A. If, if f of x is positive, which means positive or zero, be above x-axis or touches x-axis on A, B, so on that interval we need, then Definite integral from A to B, that's how you read it. Integral from A to B, f of x dx can represent the area. Let's just do equals A. And that's how we start introducing definite integrals. That's why this chapter is called Areas and Definite Integrals. This is area, area under f under the curve f over a and b so that's the idea the area below the curve we like explaining it as a shadow i like it more it's a shadow below the curve from a to b or the rain if you want to but what happens if it's below x axis if it is floating below over here then it's not raining anymore that's kind of the problematic idea here. It's not raining, but you can imagine there's a flashlight below. There's a flashlight uh, below the curve, and it gives you shadow up. So we can then put the negative sign. Area is still positive. You have to understand it. Area is a physical object. What is the area of this paper? Which times height? But if it's below, we're going to just manually put a negative sign there because we need to explain somehow to people who read the results that this area was below x-axis. In this case, we're going to say if f of x is negative or touches x-axis on a, b, then integral from a to b, get used to this phrase, integral from a to b, f of x dx is minus a now so the the number will be the same that's the thing it still will be a but you have to manually put a negative sign there or mass will do it for you minus a so it's going to be minus area between x-axis and the graph that's the area that is kind of makes sense when i show you this example so in general example and you, that's what you're gonna have in your homework if you have this situation for example uh, in 2d computer game your character is digging a pit yeah a hole whatever so it's digging a pit and it digged out this amount of dirt but then dirt went somewhere so it's made exactly the same amount or whatever 
a little hill on the side of it. How would you calculate the total area? That's a very interesting idea here. So this area will be negative. A1 will be negative because it's emptiness, right? It's below x-axis, so it's a pit. There is nothing there. This one actually does something. It has something there. So the total, the total will be integral from A to B. What is my A and B? Let me indicate. From A to B is the total thing. From A to B. Wouldn't that imply that the design function would have, a, have an area of zero? That's a good question. I wanted to ask it in a second. So total will be minus A1 plus A2. Positive when it's above axis and negative when it's below x-axis. So that's kind of the idea. Now, if I claim that they're exactly the same, it will be the same number, minus one plus, so it gives you zero. And that's how sometimes we can indicate if the ends became zero, you can say, wait a second, so all these were the same ones, and they just collapsed to zero. Whatever was dirt on top of the ground, and dirt from the hole, matched. So basically, if you move this back into the pit, it's supposed to make it flat, right? Not more, not less. That's the idea. If they are the same, but maybe they're not the same. What is a nice example of the function? What is a nice example of the graph of the function that has lots of hills and lots of pits and they're all the same size? Size and cosines, amazing, you guys thought about it. Up and down, up and down. If you put it down, it's from minus one and one. So you imagine that whatever is below and whatever is above is always the same. So, exactly, such a good idea. Sine x or cosine x, still look the same. Look at it. Ooh, like that. And it just keeps floating. So, if you start adding exactly the same amount from here to here, that is zero. Unless you add three pieces. If you add three pieces, it's not zero anymore. But you add one more, zero, not zero, zero, and so on. So, it's pretty cool that that is the quality of the sound wave if it has exactly the same height, a heartbeat, and so on. And that's why there's lots of studies about that. It's pretty cool idea. Okay, let's do some examples from your homework. But do you have questions? What do you think? Does it make sense? Kind of. Not too bad. And now geometry starts. Let me review for you all the stupid formulas of triangles and rectangles you guys don't like. So, example. Find, find uh, the value of the value of integral from 0 to 2 4x plus 2 dx and then in your exam and your homework it will say using geometry geometry and this is somehow like a scary sound for you guys i don't know why using geometry is that supposed to be on fire <laughs> i don't know using geometry so we don't know how to calculate definite integrals yet. If you do know, you know what I'm talking about right now, then you'll probably get super bored. You will say, why are we doing it so complicated using geometry? There is an easier way to do it, avoiding geometry. Nobody's doing it using geometry, but they teach it like this in American colleges. So let's do it. You will see it in your homework and in your exam, and who knows why. Your first solution. Your first, let's do steps. Step one. Sketch the graph. Ske I see I have problems with this word. Sketch. Sketch. Yeah, okay, good. Sketch the picture or the, the graph. So, what do you want to sketch? I want to sketch this function called f of x, which is hidden inside of the integral. It's called f for x plus 2. And I want to sketch it from 0 to 2. From x equals 0. 2 x equals 2 and that's why it matters to know limits of integration if you just say the interval is 2 you don't know where did you start and where did you end we went from 0 to 2 so first of all i already know that we are from here to here from 0 to 2 on the x axis and now you need to remember how to graph things you're gonna probably grab your graphing calculator well that is cheating and i'm joking of course but all europeans who come to teach in america we believe it's cheating using graphic calculator like come on we were we know how to graph things right 
4x plus 2. Like y equals 4x plus 2. In my case, I was taught like this, and that's how I do it. Very fast, I build a table. Line needs only two points to be graphed. So, for example, at 0, it should be 2. Let me plug it right away. At 0, it has height 2. And then anything you like, I don't know, 1, then it's 6, doesn't really matter. At 1, it goes pretty high to 6. Connect. Done. So you're not graphing equation. I think it's longer to type it in. Hello? Okay, I agree on that. Well, yeah, I mean, he has a good point. When it's complicated, you should not criticize. Okay, then I'm not. That's a good point. If it's complicated, do whatever it has to be. If it's sine of logarithm divided by arc sine 17 pi log, Flat. yes, yes, you no, should do that. At, that. at that point, you should probably, you should just, at that point, you should give up. No, never give up, never give up. So, but lines, parabolas, circles, we kind of believe you know how to do that. What are we looking here? We just explained you over here that this integral represents one of the ideas of the integral is that it represents the area below this function from a to b so let's find this area graphically from a to b i need to enclose it like so a is zero b is two and then i will take a highlighter and highlight for you that this is this is the area we're talking about. We need to find this area. So basically what it's telling you, there is a roof of the parking area. Say this um, sun, what's the name of it? Uh, sun accumulating energy panels. Yes, yeah, sun panels. Solar panels. Solar panels. Yes, solar panels. And they're making shadow. And you was asked as an engineer, for example, find this area below that roof on the parking lot and above the ground. That's exactly what this integral means over here. This is A we're looking for. Before we learn how to integrate different integrals, you can do it geometrically. What is the name of this shape? Who knows? So step one, picture is done. Step two, formulas. What is this shape called? Do you know? No, nothing? T. Yes, thank you. Trapezoid. Trapezia in Russian. Trapezoid. It sounds cuter in Russian. Trapezia. Trapezoid is like a humanoid, you know, like an alien. Anyone? A formula for the area, I'm pretty sure none of you remember, which is fine. You know, I was forced to memorize all the formulas, but in, in oh, your generation... Exactly. Oh, you do know? Tell me. Um, it would be, that would be, uh, it would be the length of the, or of... Oh wait, that would only work on regular Never mind. I, I can so, really think of on a standard. <laughs> it would be because it, you you want to consider it as a rectangle on a triangle. And a yes, triangle. there's something like that, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Any? Yeah, the same thing. Right? Yes, you want to consider it as a triangle and so. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's not really, because this works better when there are two triangles. I'm not sure how to make it general. So it is one half. Han, one half. Oh, we still actually don't know all the points to claim that we can... I don't know if it's a general case. I yeah, we need to figure out the points. I can do it for certain specific. No, no, you're fine. So, one half, and then anyone remembers what more? One half, well, every triangle is one half. Let's here. call this uh, C and D. In this, but in this instance, it would be one half... C times D. That's the formula if you see the trapezoid looking like this. C, D... Does it reduce that way? Yeah. Because it would be 1 half because it would be d minus c. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever the times the third side times 2 in the case. Yes, that's true. Because it yeah, it's a, reduce, it's a reduction. Let me find out. Um, Can't you just split the area into the triangle? Yes, the easiest way is just to, if you don't remember, that's exactly what I would do. I mean, I can tell you that's what true, too. I would just reduce it. If you want to know, it's going to be base plus base over 2 times height. So that's a reduced one. Base times base, uh, I guess, that's not called, I don't want to call it A and B, it will be confusing. Let's call this one C and D. So base and base of the roof and the floor, we add them together, C plus D. Oh, C plus D 
and multiplying by height. Which height? Oh, I might. Re is okay. How, it's that tilted. That's why. Is that how this reduces? Because. But uh, Chris, let me finish. Thank you. <laughs> You're distracting me. I cannot finish the stupid formula. Just a second. A second, okay. Uh, base. Or else we'll mess up like five times already. Messed it up. Five times messing up a stupid formula of the trapezoid. The base and the base, C and D, add up together times the height. Height is unique. It's this height H. Like so. Yes, that was a reducing formula before. So this is a general formula if you need to use it. Here it is. Yeah, one half is there. So, or if you don't remember, use a triangle. I would do that. That's what I would just, I know the triangle formula. Why, why does one happen to be C? Just because, why not? It's derived from the parallelepipedes, to be honest. I think yeah. I'm trying to think of how it would look in a specific instance and how that would reduce. So let's figure out what do we have here. How long is this? How long is this? So my uh, shape here is tilted, as you can see, in this example. So the base is C and D over here. How big is C? What do you think? Two, two right? How do you know? It's two minus zero. So it is two. Two is my C plus. How long is D? That's the one we don't know. We actually never figure out this point. So let's finish the picture. What is this point? 10. ten. How do you know it's 10? Well, how do you know? You just plug 2 into the function. We have to try to explain it. 4 times 2 plus 2 is 8 times 2, which is 10. So this point in 10. So how big D is? 10, right? It's the height. So 10 is my D. Finally, what is H in this case? H is, now you tilt your head and you figure out the distance from here to here. But this is the same as over here, it's H. What did you say? Two. two. Be careful if it's shifted to the right, you need to actually find the distance H, not just from zero to two. It might be different than that. H is two. Finally, the answer is 12. Make sure it's positive because this area should be positive. So, integral from 0 to 2, 4x plus 2, dx is 12. Any questions, Chris? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm turning my <laughs> You are very active today. Yes. The entire reason would be I don't know the general case and I'm trying to do No problem, right. no problem, yes. Any questions, anyone? What do you think? Uh, yes. Would the area be given in the exam? I will see if coordinator allows. I usually give. Yeah. I try to give. Unless we were told not to. Example two. From zero to eight, six minus two x dx. Again, we, I will teach you how to calculate this integral in five seconds, literally next week. But no, we have to go to geometry. That's still totally like American style of teaching calculus one class. We do it here in all states, in all schools. It's a local book uh, that tells us to teach it like this. So same idea. Instead of just finishing the stupid integral, we have to make a sketch. Let's do it. Sketch the graph. This is the function you're graphing, f of x. Step one, f of x equals six minus two x. Again, table is faster than your calculator. If x is zero, output is six. Zero, six. If x is, what, three will be nice. Three, three times two is six, six minus six is zero. So it's gonna be over here. So this time, we are working with this line. And I'll finish right now on purpose to see what's going on. But the integral is saying, actually, I don't want to stop at 3. Last time it was a coincidence. I want to keep going and finding area from 0 to 8. Let's see, let's see. From 0 to 8, where is 8? 8 is over here. So, let me change the color. A is 0, B is 8. That means I need to keep going with my line. Line will keep going forever. From minus infinity to infinity. We learned this in this class. Here it is. 
but we're gonna cut it off from zero to eight. Now we have two types of areas. Area one is above x-axis, and area two is below x-axis. Here it is. Here it is. A1 and A2. And we're gonna find what is happening again if it gives you zero. That means they're the same. If if the answer is positive, the final answer is positive. The hill is bigger than the pit. If it's negative, the pit is larger and so on. So that kind of makes physical sense over here. You guys, questions? Geometry, yes. Okay, let's figure out. This time we have triangles. It's perfect time to figure this problem out. A1 and A2 are both triangles. Who remembers uh, the triangle formula? Something one half, yes. What are you saying? Base times height. So let me build some kind of random triangle. This is what you say, A times B, like so. Agree, no? A times B. Basically, it comes from the parallelogram, because if you create the full thing, it will be just side times side. This one you divide by two, like so. So let's figure out what is what do you think is A1? Who knows? Definitely it's one half, that's the one that we know. <laughs> one half is always there. Height, oh, this is the right triangle, so convenient. So from zero to six, the height is six. What is the base from zero to three? I can actually write it down for you here. This side is six, this side is three. So convenient. So the final answer is nine. This is positive area, it's above the x-axis. A2, now we have to be careful with A2. I only know one half part, definitely shows up right away. Now let's go up and see how high this uh, triangle over here. Now it's actually not high, it's kind of deep. We don't know, we didn't figure out this point. What is this point? This point comes from the intersection of y equals 6 minus 2x, that's the given function, and the point, 8, right? So I'm plugging 8, y equals 6 minus 2 times 8, which is? Which one? Negative 10. Negative 10. So what is the height of this side then? 10. Remember, absolute value gives us height. Like there's a difference of understanding how, how much dirt is missing from this pit, right? But also how, it, how far does it go down? It goes 10 feet down, for example. So it's not negative 10. So it's gonna be 10 times. What is the other side? Five. five. You see, not eight. Be careful with this. This side is five. Oops. It's five. Finally, the answer is 25. Now, it is positive if you are asking the idea of how deep this is. This is the English uh, problem over here. Yesterday I lost three dollars or I minus three dollars today, right? So either you do a negative sign and then you keep the positive word or you say I lost positive word. So it's an English problem, not actually a mathematical problem. Here it says, okay, it's 25, but we remember that this is below x-axis. So the total area, the total area will be A equals A1 plus minus, I would say plus negative A2 or minus A2. Nine minus 25. The answer is negative, so what can this tell you? Negative 16, so what does it mean that it's negative? The area on the right is bigger than the area. Area below the x-axis is larger than area above x-axis. So if you do all sine cosine together, they are equal, but sometimes it's not the case. And it's also very physical point of view to figure out what is bigger and what is not. But again, in terms of integrals, let's write it down. The first integral was the integral of six minus two x dx. The first triangle, now I will do the total. The integral from zero to eight 
is the sum of two triangles, which is, mm, let me see, sum or difference, difference. The one was from 0 to 3, 6 minus 2x dx minus, and then the other was from 3 to 8, 6 minus 2x dx. This is what we did in terms of uh, integrals. The uh, confusing part, again, of American education in this case, we keep putting so much attention to geometry and rectangles, and we're going to never do it again. We will never go back to this topic. Because they want to show you, oh, if areas are convenient, and by convenient, they are magically right triangle. Since when buildings have perfect right triangles and stuff, there's always some kind of beautiful decorations and spheres and, so, and angles. So we will learn how to do it for all kind of cases, not necessarily beautiful triangles and rectangles. And that is more interesting. But no, the first one to introduce it is through the simple shapes. And then it ditched the whole idea after this. So that is the local system of education. I mean, you like it or not, we're still doing it. So that's what we do. But on Wednesday, we're going to do it in a more convenient way, and you will enjoy it much more. You will see that. Mm -hmm. Let me stop. See you guys on Wednesday. Look over your exams. You have my comments there. There are comments on the test, your grades are there, everything.